Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. This is part of five uh, series of lectures uh, where I'm going to try to explain Feynman's lost lecture. And where we last left off, we had this Newton diagram. In Newton's diagram, the sun's at H, the planet's at J, and the planet moves from J to I in a straight line, and then at that time, the sun uh, emits sort of a, a pulse of force. Now, according to Newton, that force is proportional to 1 over the, dis the square of the distance from h to i. And uh, so, so that force happens and it causes the planet to, to change directions. This triangle over here uh, represents the distance it traveled before, which is also related to the speed it was going, because the time interval, uh, each of the time intervals is going to be the same. So here I have two time intervals. So this can also be thought of as being proportional to the speed of how fast the planet was going, because it's this distance divided by this amount of time. Now, the planet in the second time interval goes from here to here, which is actually shorter. It's, it's actually going slower. And since it's happened in the same amount of time, um, the speed is slower also. And that is why, oh, and, and up here I have the change in velocity, that's how much the, the speed changed from here to here. It not only got uh, smaller, but it also changed direction. I want you to look over here again. This is what I've been calling the velocity diagram. This is basically a copy of this triangle, as you can see, it's right here. But these line segments represent the speed. So here it's traveling at a, a fast speed, because it's a fairly long line segment. And the direction it's going is the same as the direction from J to I. Whereas it changes direction, and it also changes speed, gets slower. So this line segment's a bit shorter, as you can see. And as this thing continues, it's like spokes on a wheel that get created on this velocity diagram. Now, each of these little uh, changes in velocity um, are related to two things. There is uh, the force, which is 1 over r squared, and there's also the amount of time that, uh, that passes, because the force has to be bigger uh, for, for a bigger amount of time. But since all these time intervals are, are equal, the change in velocity, the, the size of it, is going to be proportional to 1 over r squared. So as we get further away from the sun, 1 over r squared gets smaller, which makes is why these, these line segments down here are, are very small. Which is to say, again, the change in velocity, that's these things, are proportional to 1 over r squared times the amount of time that's happened. But since, in, at least in Newton's picture, the amount of time is equal, it just becomes proportional to the 1 over r squared. And that's why you got uh, these changes, changes in velocity being much smaller, because they're proportional to 1 over r squared, and 1 over r squared is smaller when r gets bigger. Well, now we're ready to finally move on to Feynman. Feynman gets to this point. It's all Newton at this point. And then Feynman even admits that he gets confused by Newton's proof that this sort of polygon that's being created um, would become an ellipse if the time interval was made small enough. But I'm going to switch over to Feynman's picture now. Now here's the idea that Feynman has. <clears throat> Feynman says, what if uh, the force from the sun is still uh, proportional, uh, inversely proportional to the square of the distance, but my sun will not pulse at equal time intervals anymore. What if instead the sun pulses like this? Now, it's not, as you might have noticed, it's not pulsing at equal time intervals. It seems to sort of be slowing down. And it is slowing down because what's happening here is the sun is not pulsing at equal time intervals, but it's pulsing in such a way so that all of these angles here are equal. They're all 30 degrees in this case. In Newton's diagram, those angles were not equal. Um, they got smaller 
as the planet got further away from the sun. But now the sun is pulsing in such a way that it's producing this sort of polygon. In this case, it's going to be a 12-sided polygon so that the angles are, are equal. So I'm going to keep this going to give you a feel for that. So it pulses and it waits until it gets an equal angle before it does the next pulse. And then it waits again and again and again. I'm going to run this around one more time just because it's worthwhile to look at it. Okay, it's going slow here. Notice that these triangles here are much bigger than the, than the original triangles. Okay, so this is Feynman's idea. He says, I am going to not have the sun pulse at equal time intervals, but I'm going to have it pulse in such a way that the angle here, this angle, is equal to this angle is equal to this angle. And what this does is it means that, that it's not the same time intervals, but when the areas are equal, if the triangles were all equal like they were in Newton's diagram, then the time intervals would be all the same. But here, these, uh, out, these triangles out here have bigger areas than these other uh, triangles. So um, it, it's taking longer in this, in this part. Now when I put in those um, the triangles that kind of show how things are changing. We have these triangles at the bottom look really big, showing how, how the speeds are, are changing or how, how the velocities are changing. But I'm going to stop here and just analyze this. Now, these triangles are all at different scales, these triangles on the outside. In the Newton diagram, they were all at the same scale because they were all happening in the same time period. But, like, this line segment here is very short, but this time period is, is short also, so it, it, it could be going faster. It, it, it's, it's a, it went a short distance, but it went in a short time. Whereas over here, it went a long distance, but it took a really, it took a long time. So it's hard to compare these these triangles. We can't just stick them all next to each other like we did in the Newton diagram. We can only do that in the Newton diagram because all the time intervals were the same. Uh, these time intervals need to be, uh, these triangles need to be scaled in order to create a uh, velocity diagram. Well, here is Feynman's big observation. In, in order to understand Feynman's observation, I want to review a couple of things from, from geometry. The first one is, if you have two similar triangles, um, their areas will be proportional to the squares of their, of their heights. And as you can see, so basically if you have two similar triangles, if you double uh, the height of, if this one has double the height of, of this one, which it does, the area will be four times as big. And that, that's because if the height doubles, the base doubles also. And, um, one half base times height, when you double both of them, becomes multiplied by four. And this will happen with similar triangles. If I have a triangle, notice how the ratio between the two areas is 10.74. That's equivalent to the ratio of the squares of the two heights. Well, that's what happens if you have two similar isosceles triangles. But what if they are not similar triangles? Here I have two triangles that are not similar, but they do have one angle in common. Angle uh, CBD and uh, <coughs> angle HKJ, HKG, both 30 degree angles. Well, there's going to be a relationship between these triangles also. And here's why. If I have a triangle that has a 30 degree angle, it is possible to create an isosceles triangle. And this isosceles triangle has the exact same area as the original triangle. And this, I could do the same thing with this bigger triangle. There is an isosceles triangle. It turns out the length of the side of this isosceles triangle is um, the square root of the product of the two um, original sides. But the main thing for us to know is that it is possible to create an isosceles triangle uh, that has the same area as the other triangle. So the area of the green triangle is, uh, is proportional to the square of the height 
And that means that the area of this original triangle is 2.